uh, a very good afternoon everybody and uh, so th in this point we have to uh, discuss uh, narrative uh, pattern uh, in the uh, only story uh, the, the latest novel by uh, julian uh, barnes okay. uh, i hope uh, from uh, they are able to uh, see uh, here as well. so uh, let us see how this narrative pattern uh, can be divided in various parts uh, in this uh, novel so uh, we see that uh, uh, there is uh, this nar narrative uh, by Julian Barnes is structured uh, along the classical line also uh, in this. So, uh, being a postmodernist uh, 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 storyteller, uh, Julian Barnes, very well known as a postmodernist storyteller, uh, uh, as a part of an experiment, uh, uh, he also in this uh, novel trying with a, a bit of a classical way of telling a story also. So, we'll see what is that classical line eh, which uh, he has adopted in telling a story there. But it is not limited only to that. Eh? It is not only limited to only that. Uh, there is a very interesting narrative trope eh, which we can see here. Uh, uh, there. Uh, in a timeline yesterday we have discussed that how uh, the story begins uh, with uh, uh, an old man of 70 years uh, and then he takes a uh, uh, a jump into flashback that is 50 years back jump is taken by him uh, and tells a story about 19 year old uh, person and then again comes back to his 70 years uh, self and then again goes back to the 30s uh, he was in 20s and then 30s and then uh, last time again he goes back to 50s uh, where uh, last meeting with Suzanne is there between plot so that that narrative drop uh, with what image or with what kind of uh, uh, metaphor can we see? We will see that, eh? what metaphor we can use for that. Uh, and then uh, the another aspect of this narrative pattern is unreliable narrator, now quite obviously very popularly known into uh, the modern postmodern narrator that you can't rely on uh, the one who is telling you the story. And if that person is telling a story from memory, then it is completely unreliable because the very postmodern idea of memory is highly problematic uh, and it, it, it tends to tell that we, we may not always record the things in our memory the way it happens but the way we want to but the way we want to and on this idea Julian Barnes himself has already philosophized in his previous novel that is the sense of an ending where he proved this point that how the, the very idea of memory is very much unreliable and uh, uh, forget about the history that people are telling and you can que we can question the, the uh, uh, history of the historians uh, that we can question history of the historians and we can talk about uh, those uh, things but here it is not that uh, uh, in my memory if my memory is my history then I am the historian uh, uh, of, of my memory. So, can I doubt myself that whatever way I have remembered the happenings may be problematic. I have remembered it the way I wanted to, not the way it really happened. So, the very idea of memory is problematized in this and that's why anybody, a first person narrator who is going back in the memory and telling a story obviously becomes an unreliable narrator. And then narration drifts from first person to second and third person. This is very interestingly done in this eh, novel. First part is by and large first person narration. Second, we get second and the first person. And in the third, there is a third person narration also coming along with second person. So, how can we uh, uh, see this eh, narrative pattern with the theme of uh, the novel that we will see. And finally, authorial comments, eh, philosophical broodings are also used in this pattern. So, we will try to see the narrative pattern in the only story with the help of this uh, five points uh, uh, and we will try to justify uh, uh, that. Uh, so, uh, narrative structure, uh, narrative is structured, narrative structured along classical lines. So, what we see there, uh, the novel uh, by and large begins uh, with a very interesting uh, definition in the uh, one of the uh, on one of the pages i think huh? uh, it might be coming there uh, uh, in this recording also uh, it begins uh, with a, a, a page where it says that uh, what is the definition of novel uh, what is the definition of novel and it is quite a classical definition coming from uh, coming from 
the first dictionary of English language written by Dr. Samuel Johnson. Dr. Samuel Johnson is the uh, one uh, and this was in uh, 1755, 1755 and the entry into the dictionary about novel, uh, entry of this word novel in the dictionary is, novel is a small tale, a small a tale generally of love, generally of uh, uh, love, uh, that is how. So, uh, uh, well, uh, this novel is this, uh, it's a very classical novel, <laughs> it's a classical story, uh, which is all, what is novel? Novel is a small tale and generally of uh, love, this is where it is. So, there is one aspect that how this novel is based on the classical line, it goes back to the definition of novel, which is a very classical definition of novel, given by whom? Dr. Samuel Johnson, in the dictionary, uh, uh, in the first dictionary of English language in 1755. So, he used that, uh, which gives us a key, this is a very interesting key uh, to open up uh, this, that what is this story about? Uh, the only story Barnes uh, 13th novel does prove to be in many respect a contemporary exemplar of this Johnson's uh, definition. Uh, it is small, uh, uh, it is small in a sense of intimate and specific focus, one man's recollected story and it is small in length uh, weighing in at well under 300 pages through uh, spanning more than three decades in time, though, uh, though spanning uh, more than three decades in time. As for generally of love, the narrator Paul's uh, uh, re-examination of this, his only story does indeed meet uh, this prerequisite. This is his story of a life-changing, life-defining love affair from innocence to experience, from youth to age, from infatuation to weariness. So, that is how this is about love. Okay. So, uh, when we see this, whether it is a small, yes, it is a small, uh, in terms of, well, book also not very bulky. Yeah, we have seen previous two contemporary novels, which is Gun Island and, uh, and uh, the uh, uh, Ministry of Utmost Happiness, both were much bulkier than this. So, comparatively, this is a rather thin book. Comparatively, it's a rather thin book. Now, you know that when you start reading, it doesn't seem to be so thin that you can read it within a day or a two. But it is called a small tale, eh? so far as novels are concerned. Yeah, there. But apart from that, that physical uh, 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 of this book, it's a story about one person and the memory and an affair eh? in a younger day. So that way also it is very small. It doesn't have a larger scope. Again, if you go back to the stories that we have just discussed before this, uh, and that is about uh, Gun Island or Ministry of Utmost Happiness. We have seen that Ministry of Utmost Happiness speaks about Kashmir, about Chhattisgarh, about Bastar, uh, about down south, about Gujarat, so many things. Uh, there is a, the scope is very wide uh, there. Uh, when we talk about uh, Gun Island, there are three continents there. Uh, this, there is India, Sundarbans, there is Bangladesh, Sundarbans. There is uh, Venice from Italy, Europe, and then there is uh, uh, Brooklyn, Los Angeles, wildfires in America uh, also. So, uh, you have uh, that large scope. So, in that capacity, this is a small uh, story, though the, the, the span is of couple of decades, uh, three decades, four decades are there in a the story, but as such, it is a very small story also. And of love, uh, which obviously tells us that the central theme of this novel also is love. But what kind of love is this? What kind of love uh, uh, is this? It's not that romantic love which, which materializes into a kind of a happiness in life, when people keep on craving for something in the life which leads to happiness ultimately. And that is what we tell as a story that, well, this was my love. It meant it can be a human being, it can be a thing, it can be a cause, it can be study, job, work, anything. It is not only a human being. But then ultimately you say, eh, for example, the recently completed uh, 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 this uh, Australian Open, eh, uh, when Rafael Nadal wins uh, uh, that final after after injury of uh, and operations and at the age of 35, which is considered as quite an old age eh, to play a competitive tennis eh, and beating somebody who is 10 years younger than him eh, in the finals and winning a marathon match, eh, marathon eh, tournament. Well, he would say that my love is tennis, <laughs> Grand Slam is my love, <laughs> he, is, he has won 21 Grand Slam, he is at the top 
uh, so far as men's are concerning women there are three other who are ahead uh, uh, of uh, uh, him steffi graf is at number 22 uh, uh, serena williams is 23 and then margaret court is number 24 but as, as normally we know that we celebrate men's victory more than women's victories <laughs> that is the patriarchy in different way so there are other three women already ahead of nadal but then people rarely talk about those eh, the way we talk about rafael nadal and his success well but if you ask him eh, what's his love eh, then tennis eh, which is again a part of this novel also tennis is there uh, in this novel also and grand slam uh, trophies uh, uh, is, is the love so in that way eh, that whenever people achieve something and they look back they said that well this was my love when something has gone out of our hand when we wanted something and we were not able to get it, when we tell our only story, we never tell that that, that was my love, which has gone out of my hand. Uh, or anything that we deeply desired in at the age of 19 or 20 or 21, 22, as most of you are uh, of that age, uh, around uh, uh, early, mid 20s. So what are the dreams today? What will be the story when you are 70 years old? <laughs> Yeah, well, it will not be the story which has gone out of your hand or something that has slipped out of the hand can never be our only story. Our only story will be always that what I have today yeah, at the age of 70, what I have and I will construct my story around that only. I will say that right from the childhood, I was preparing myself for this. <laughs> that will be my story. Though in the mid time, if you write a diary, you will see that, well, that was nowhere in the diary. <laughs> that you are preparing yourself for for this or that uh, kind of a thing but well th that is how we fool ourselves also that is the problem of uh, uh, self narration or that is the problem of telling stories to self again and again and we keep on revising uh, those stories time and again uh, that is the philosophical concern of julian barnes uh, in several of his uh, novels uh, including the sense of an ending uh, and this also so, uh, uh, how this? Uh, this story is a story of weariness. It is a story of weariness moving from infatuation. Uh, so, infatuation is a, a kind of an immature attraction for something or somebody. Here it is somebody. That is a middle-aged, 48-year-old Suzanne MacLeod. Uh, the attraction for that for by a 19-year-old young person. So, that is infatuation. It is not love. It is just an attraction uh, there. And then it leads into weariness. So it is a story, uh, it is a love affair which moves from innocence to experience, from youth to age. That is how the story moves on. So that is again a classical uh, streak that we find uh, here. Uh, the other thing about classical uh, uh, technique uh, that we can see here uh, in this is about uh, classical technique of uh, direct address to the reader. Barnes not only frames our expectation with Dr. Johnson's iconic definition, he goes on to employ a classic novelist technique of direct address to the reader. Often throughout the book, narrator and protagonist Paul steps to the age of the proscenium and soliloquizes, musing to himself and speaking to us. He poses this question on the first page, presaging all that follows. Would you rather love the more and suffer the more or love the less and suffer the less? Very beginning, right from the very first line of this novel is starting with the question here. Would you rather love the more and suffer the more or rather the less or love less and suffer the less? That is, I think, finally, the only real question that is final. So what choice would you make in a life? How far will you be ready to suffer to achieve your love? Well, again, to make a point more wider, uh, uh, though in this novel, love is for somebody, we can always replace that idea love with anything in life. It can be a thing, it can be a person, it can be a, a, a kind of a wishful thinking, it can be a dream, a desire, uh, any kind of thing that people have. So how are you ready to suffer for your love? That is ultimately very, very important uh, point uh, here. You suffer less, yeah, you love less, uh, and you achieve less. Uh, you suffer more, you love more, you achieve more. 
that is uh, uh, perhaps the real question that he wants to and this is the question which time and again people have asked in in various uh, 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 narrative uh, we refer to the example of uh, hayavadan uh, giris karnad who also employs the same kind of uh, uh, classical technique of telling a story so bhagavad uh, uh, in the beginning comes he invokes lord ganesh and raises the question about perfection uh, or about imperfections uh, so how far man or god are perfect beings and then the lord ganesh itself is an epitome or the best example of imperfections from the body look and other thing it is completely imperfect uh, in the thing so how do people look and then it becomes a general theme of hayavadan uh, in, in that story uh, uh, also so this is how uh, this this narration uh, that they raise questions uh, in the initial part and then they come and then here the narrator himself comes uh, narrator himself comes to tell a story we have seen in salman rushdie's midnight children also that the narrator salim himself is the sutradhar uh, and he comes and tells a story to padma and the same questions he would raise and then answer padma is not a kind of an audience who would have questions or would also give any answers <laughs> so narrator himself will have to raise question and answer the thing katha sarit sagar or any of the katha that normally we have uh, religious kathas bhagavad kathas and other uh, 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 kathas of ramayana and other thing we always see that the person who is a teller of a story will raise question and answer the things it is not that the audience will raise question and the kathakar will answer but the the narrator himself so this classical way of raising questions and answering is also followed in, in this novel here he continues you may point out correctly that it isn't a real question because we don't have a choice does paul himself agree with his empathetic denial of choice and agency not entirely not consistently at least not in this pages which he explains are only his latest iteration of his oft told and retold uh, old uh, only story throughout the novel he explores questions raised by his experience questions of choice versus inevitability responsibility versus blamelessness predestination versus roads not taken in telling his own story uh, his one story he looks back still struggling with persistent dilemmas uh, and conflicts uh, uh, also so this is uh, this part uh, where uh, the classical way of looking uh, at the the narration uh, that comes uh, uh, here uh, uh, there uh, and then one more part of that is this chronological trajectory chronological trajectory classical stories do they use flashback as a technique but then then the story moves rather chronological in a rather chronological not completely chronological but rather chronological method is followed there uh his will be uh, he is advising us a story with a timeline and an arc and what kind of timeline it is going to have well a 70 years old man will tell take us 50 years back into his life when he is 19 years of age uh, and then tell a story of almost a decade in a chronological way up till 29 30 where he will drift apart from susan uh, uh, and will move abroad for his career and then uh, again he will take us into his life in his story uh, when he is uh, somewhere around 50s uh, late 40s or 50s at that time he will take us again into uh, 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 that story and then he will conclude that story when he is of the age of 70 so now in this going back into that story there is no disturbance in chronology then it moves uh, swiftly according to the timeline so that understanding timeline of the narration which we have done yesterday is very important to see where it begins how far it goes back and then chronologically he keeps on moving back uh, and he is not disturbing the chronology of going back into uh, this thing in another novel like the sense of an ending there are lots of disturbances with that chronology also when the person is going back at what point then again comes back and again goes back is all distorted or disturbed chronology uh, that one can see uh, in that also uh, that is tried uh, that that post modernity is tried in this novel also but in a later part only in last few pages we find the way he keeps on moving back uh, and coming back that is uh, very much again going into uh, uh, the similar pattern like 
the sense of an ending uh, which he is doing which is not obviously the classical line uh, which he is following in the last part or the final pages of this uh, novel uh, dr johnson would be pleased with this careful three part structure also part 1 2 and 3 and how it moves there the narrative proceeds in flashback from distant to recent past along a chronological trajectory formally divided into three separate sections which are simply titled as 1 2 and 3 and then again there are no complexities there also so uh, the the classical narrative technique was not very complex as such though they used this method of flashback a lot somebody coming and then telling a story that stage is prepared as we have seen in hayavadan or even many popular films also like sodagar uh, and other films also use the same technique of telling uh, the story so flashback is a very classical uh, way of using uh, the the technique to tell a story so only flashback will not make any narrator a modern narrator but along with the flashback what else you do what experiments you are doing with the flashback uh, that perhaps will make one a modern or experimental uh, writer or even uh, a post modern narrator there so this is uh, how it begins uh, the story uh, in the initial part uh, that we uh, have seen here okay? so that is first part uh, about a uh, classical uh, uh, streak second point uh, is this narrative trop so what kind of narrative trop uh, is being used here uh, in this uh, uh, narrative uh, if you see that then uh, we see that there is this uh, retrospective way of looking and it is like a vision into rap and weft so let us think of this metaphor of rap and weft this this image helps us understand what is rap and what is a uh, uh, weft so this narrative trope is more like weft weft this this weft is this line uh, that goes into threading of garments or clothes uh, when we see microscopically at any cloth we find that there are threads standing and slip, slipping threads uh, or you can say wrapped and weft threads are there uh, that make this technique is like this wafting so in a, in a, in a flow of the things somewhere in between uh, uh, the story is shaping itself so uh, as in the initial part he tells the story uh, uh, or, or he just philosophizes he is not telling us a story in the initial part and then uh, uh, he starts uh, the story perhaps on the uh, second uh, uh, page uh, or still he will not start on the second page he will just tell about time and other things uh, and then on the third page he will say uh, the tennis club the tennis club and then he will uh, enter into telling of uh, that story so you already have some kinds of things there and uh, suddenly you enter into story and then you tell something and then you again come out of that and again you enter into your story again you come out of the story again you so into the philosophical brooding the entire fabric is of philosophical brooding in that the weft of the story is interwoven the weft of the story is interwoven into the entire fabric of philosophical brooding that one can see here so the issue of temporal point of view retrospect is key here paul is uh, as he tells us uh, revisiting and he admits inevitably if unintentionally uh, uh, revising and revisioning uh, personal history and emotional experience he is not a retrospective vantage point of tranquility his distance does not clarify Paul claims neither wisdom nor accuracy. Another time-honored narrative trope is in play here, a technique woven into the weft of storytelling from the earliest oral tradition. So, a uh, uh, timeline also is an example for this. That how we can see this timeline there. Uh, the initial part of the story. If we if we read this part, uh, the the beginning part, which uh, time and again we keep on coming uh, to the beginning few pages uh, to see. Uh, for various examples or illustrations to uh, to quote or cite in our answer so first he raises the question would you rather love the more and suffer the more or love the less and suffer the less that is i think finally the only real uh, question then he says you may point out 
now see he's addressing us directly you may point out if we want to see a part of a, of a no, uh, this uh, here also yes, so it begins and then he says you may point out correctly that it isn't a real question yes. so now see the very first thing he is now contradicting uh, himself now see this this vantage point uh, of an old person telling us a story into classical tradition tells us that that old person is a matured person now the way he looks is is a kind of a complete truth or it is unchallengeable fact of the the story that he is telling us but if that is the best lesson that anybody might have acquired that person has tried tested all these things and then came to the conclusion that this is life these are the people this happens and these are the suffering and this is life so the old man uh, as a narrator as we see a mandar in sodagar or anybody such a narrator who tells a story bhagwant in hayavadan or the, now they are at vantage point that there is no doubt about their way of looking now things are more clear to them but if that happens in this novel then this is a classical novel uh, or it is not a post modern novel so it has to be challenged time and again uh, into this uh, wrapping and wafting of the narrative that very vantage point of a classical standing or the stance which classical narrator takes it should be challenged time and again and that is that is somewhere julian barnes has its own uh, beauty of narration that he tells something and he breaks that he tells something and then again he breaks that uh, it is something like a like a, a, a snake eating itself a snake eating itself so uh, it, it is moving on uh, in that way that the narrator tells something and then it is eaten away broken off uh, there so here that is the only real question and then the doubt come it isn't a real question that is broken now the very first beginning is broken because we don't have the choice because we don't have the choice if we had the choice then there would be a question now that is very interesting ke a levu ke pelu levu e pas e e choice hoy to prashna che ke shu levu ek j levanu hoy to ema kya prashna ch so in your life if you have like uh, this there three four choices then you make uh, the thing or you have a question of the choice but there is nothing there in the life where a human being or anything whatever comes vadhavi j levanu che raha joine j betha che ke aao etle vadhavi laiye then there is no question at all question is always when there is a choice uh, there was there a choice that that we will ask ourselves what was i having any choice if not this that and again don't only look at love but try to see in a much wider concept as lacon uh, would say that uh, we we do require love object for our desire to be satisfied if we cannot find a love object then we all might go mad we all might go mad for sanity uh, for sanity uh, we need to have a love object where we give our uh, we downpour our or outlet of our repressed desires uh, our repression requires some kind of an outlet and uh, for that love objects are required but what are this love objects it can be individuals and human beings it can be things also it can be passion also it can be some life goals also it can be some kind of success also some kind of achievements also anything it can be it cannot necessarily be only human beings when it is human being it is very troublesome or problematic because the other human will also have repression the other human will also have a dream and desire and then those conflict of dream desire two repressions will happen when you have your love object as thing the thing will not have its own desire <laughs> the thing will not have its own uh, its own dreams or repression that it will bounce back or it will also ask us to have some kind of compromise so uh, laconian way if you look then it is better to have our love object as something uh, or a passion in life rather than some human beings but if you want to make a choice of a human being see now we have a choice here and there is a question of making a choice now if i go for my love for a human being then i should be ready for suffering also 
then I should be ultimately ready for suffering. Now I said, I want love and I don't want to be ready for suffering. Well, now that is not possible. <laughs> then you better have your love object as something which will not demand things in, 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 uh, in answer or in response. You can keep on demanding, but that will not demand uh, uh, the kind of a thing that is necessary uh, uh, there. So uh, this is choice is there, but we don't. So there isn't. Who can control how much they love? One is the choice problem, we don't have a choice, so that question itself is not existing. Who can control how much they love? Can we control love? Uh, if you can control it, then it isn't love. <laughs> if you can control it, then it isn't love. Uh, uh, I don't know what you call it instead, but it isn't love. Biju naam su api saka emana khabar nathi. <laughs> if it is controllable. So then, if you think of okay, 100 gram prem kariye, <laughs> baso gram kariye, to e prem aj na ho. <laughs> Ema eva gram na, <laughs> Ema eva control na chale. So then what is it? Well, it may be anything. I don't know what you call it, but it is not huh, love also. Most of us have only one story to tell. See how he begins huh, this philosophical brooding. And so one of, we have one only one story to tell. I don't mean that only one thing happens to us in our lives. There are countless events which we turn into countless stories. See again how he is breaking. He said that we have only one story and then within the same line says we have countless stories. <laughs> so this is that beauty of postmodern is that you tell something and within the same paragraph or the same line you eat away that. You falsify that. And these examples are what tells us that Paul is an unreliable narrator because he himself is contradicting himself. He tells something and then he is breaking it. He told here something and then he said that, well, no, that is not the real question. Real question is about choice. Real question is about control rather than about love. Choice and control, they are more important than the love. And then when you do choice and control and other thing, it doesn't remain to be love. And then he says here that uh, uh, we have only one story to tell. And then again says we have countless stories to tell. But there is only one that matters, uh, only one finally worth telling. Uh, this is mine. He says one finally worth telling story. Well, this is my uh, story here. Now, now you, you, you strike a kind of a, of a, a kind of a, a surety comes here. Uh, this is mine. This sentence, if you say this is mine. It seems like there is a surety. There is some kind of uh, a thing that, well, now from this, he is not going to, uh, he is not going to change his mind. Hmm? Uh, like he has changed his mind already twice. Hmm? Already twice he has changed his mind. Now this seems that this is mine will be quite true. But well, our narrator is unreliable. <laughs> so anything that he tells, you always start doubting. <laughs> that if, even this is mine also is a problem. <laughs> So that question uh, will start uh, asking ourselves while we read. We don't now trust this narrator because of two experiences that we got just in the half page of the novel. And then obviously he stands true to our, our, uh, 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 our faith in this unreliable narrator. And he says that, but here is the first problem. So again he goes, ke mari varta ko, pave taklip chhe aji ama. Ha varta ke vama hai, a mari varta chhe ke, ke, ke vi, ema aji taklip chhe. If this is your only story, uh, then it's the one you have most often told and retold. Jo aap ek matra tamara jivan ni varta hoi, to aap varta tamara mene atyar hoon pehli vakat na thi kai rai. Aame anek vakat kai hase. Gana loko ne pan kai hase, loko ne nahi to mari jat ne to kai hase a varta. So I might have told and retold so many times, even if as if the case here, mainly to yourself. You keep on telling those stories to yourself so many times. Or even quite true, before we tell anything that happens to other, we tell to ourselves. We organize that a lot. We organize not only words, but events also. And then we try to put ourselves into kind of a bichara pan, or a tiger, whatever we want to do. Tamare bichara thai ne vat mukvi che, ke tamare share thai ne vat mukvi che. Ye apre gothi bhi laiye che. Anek vakhat apre jat ne vat kahi kahi ne, pachhi bhi jane varta kariye che. So then uh, you have uh, lots of makeover uh, or you have done lots of 
makeup of your story. <laughs> it is not a genuine story. It is not the way it has happened. It is not the way it has happened. But it has it has gone into that wrapping and wafting so many times eh, that you have put it inside some about this, this way, that way. Lots of reorganization has undergone there. The question then is, do all these retellings bring you closer to the truth of what happened or move you further away? Now, this is a very interesting question. You keep on telling one story to yourself time and again or to other people. But why do we retell story? Why do we retell story? The answer Julian Barnes gives is that we are normally in search of truth, the truth of the story. We want to know the truth. So we keep on telling the story. If we do not have a quest for the truth, then there is no need to tell, uh, retell the story. Now, this is a very interesting idea which, which comes to us in a, in a much wider way. To see that when people are retelling Ramayana or Mahabharata again and again, why are they telling again now? What is the need to tell that story again? Because still the search for the truth is still pending. And maybe when you tell a story again, maybe you find that truth, something new or a new truth you find, which earlier it was not with us. So ultimate quest for retelling the story is in search of truth. And very deep inside, we are always hungry for the truths that what actually happened, what really happened, that is still not satisfying us. So I, I don't know whether telling the story will take me to the truth or farther away. Uh, uh, I am not sure. <laughs> the narrator tells, uh, I am not sure. Now this, this point is not in the classical advantage point. He is not into that classical. In a classical story, the old man was having that point and he was having a kind of a surety. But here, this narrator is not sure about himself, about what he is uh, telling. And all this supports to that point, unreliable uh, narrator. One test might be whether uh, as the years pass, you come out better from your own story or worse. To come out worse might indicate that you are being more truthful. Now, this is very interesting. <laughs> he says, but when you retell the story, you can do one test. <laughs> and the test is that when you tell a story and then when you come out from that, if you come out worse, dukhi ne harela manas tarike mati nikartao, when you tell that story about yourself, when you are near the truth, you will emerge worse. You will be emerge weary. You will be emerged from that story as defeated being, as Paul is emerging from that story. At the end of the story, he emerges as defeated. He realizes that he is a coward. He might have faced reality more boldly. But he's not able to do that. And so he finds himself to be a very coward kind, not complacent, but coward kind of a person that he sees. So you are coming out, you are facing yourself in a much worse manner. And then he says, maybe then your retelling or your revisiting was perhaps true or near the, the truth there. To come out worse might indicate this. On the other hand, there is the danger of being retrospectively anti-heroic, making yourself out to have behaved worse than you actually did can be a form of self-praise. So I shall have to be careful. Well, I have learned to become careful over the years. Now, see, this it tells that how will I tell a story? So I am trying to tell. But then doing this, I have to be very careful. Now he is again playing on the word careful then. So he said that, well, I have learned to become careful over the years. It means he was not careful earlier. He was rather careless in his relations and everything. But he's, over the years, I have learned to be careful, as careful now as I was careless then. carefulness <laughs> careless I was very careless once upon a time. Or do I mean carefree? <laughs> Careless ke carefree? Now say carefree is a more positive word. 
careless is a more negative word. <laughs> so he is still battling with himself. So mara vartan me hu careless kau, ke carefree kau. It is my life. I can do whatever I want. It is individualism. I was individual. I was free. And not to follow tradition is something great achievement. Is what I believed in those sixties. <laughs> Don't do what parents say. Come out from the authority of anybody. Have your own life. Make your own choices. Face life in your own way. Don't be traditional. That is, I want to be radical. So, is that not carefree, or is it careless? So, again, a play on that is the. Can a word have two opposites? Can a word have two opposites? That is, careful. Can the careful have two opposites like careless as well as carefree? Well, yes. Depends upon how we look at it. Depends upon how we look at our stories also. It can be a happy ending or unhappy ending. It can be a good story or a bad story. But it is all possibilities are there. So this is how uh, he, he he speaks uh, in the initial part uh, to uh, uh, tell. But how he is uh, doing this uh, narrative drop of retrospective going and trying to uh, see. So this revising, revisioning. Uh, how he is revising the story, revisioning and retrospective vantage point. He tries to tell that. But he is not uh, in that point of tranquility uh, as in the traditional story normally the writers are. So unreliable narrator, as we have seen a couple of examples, the same way, eh, this also, that uh, uh, we can't rely eh, on this narrative. He himself is in doubt, perhaps. Or, or if he is not in doubt, uh, if he is not in doubt, he is uh, very carefully trying to dis dissuade us. Eh, like he don't want to open up uh, very honestly before us. Our narrator is not ready to open up honestly before us. But while telling things seemingly honestly, he is hiding so many things. He is also right. So he, he seems to be more careful about hiding things rather than revealing things when he is telling uh, the story. That is the sense that we, we find in the initial part, that tone we get that he tells and then he breaks. He tells and then he counter argues with what he has told. So uh, he is trying to be very choosy, selective in how to introduce everything. And then which incidents I want to tell, which I don't want to tell, how the, those incidents are recorded huh? and how will those things speak about me? Huh? That is very carefully he is trying to do. Paul is a very vested teller. He is telling a subjective truth. Huh? He is telling a subjective truth. It is not objective truth. Yes, it is very subjective. So uh, this truth that he is telling is, uh, we can't say it is unbiased truth. It is full of bias. A personal bias is unfolding here. He is arguing his case again uh, uh, with himself and with us. He is arguing his case, like we have seen in the initial part, how he argues that if this, then this problem, that, then that problem, whether I am carefree or careless, whether it is a matter of a choice or a love uh, or of control or of love, is uh, lots of argument he is doing with himself also and with us also because he is addressing us us as you, readers are addressed in the initial part as you. He is unreliable narrator. Paul warns the reader early on in an, in an conversational aside. You understand, I hope that I am telling you everything as I remember it. I never kept a diary. I never kept a, a diary. Uh, and most of the participants in my story, my story, this is my life, that is my story. Here you see are either dead or far yeah, dispersed. Memory sorts and sifts according to the demands made on it by the rememberer. By the rememberer. So uh, this is uh, again that memory novel uh, also supports this arg argument or this quote can be useful for that idea also. And this he says that well uh, I am telling the story but from my memory the way I have remembered it. Now this itself is highly problematic. The way you remember the thing can cannot be said that it might have happened in a similar way. That is what we said earlier also. That the way people remember the thing is not the way it actually happens. And so here he says that it is just uh, uh, what kind of uh, demands uh, were there on rememberer. And based on that he is uh, recording all the happenings in the mind. And that is how they tell uh, the story to the people uh, in those uh, way also. Uh, my story uh, and my life, he wants to connect that this really happened. This is my life. It is not only story. 
but because i am telling you it becomes a story so my story is my life and the way i have uh, remembered memory sorts and sifts uh, uh, sifting atle uh, charani karvi you keep something you allow something to go off so how this sifting uh, and sorting out uh, the thing we sort out the thing useful unuseful uh, every year during diwali time uh, we do sorting in the home and so many kind of bad things unwanted things are removed and uh, how often do we do that with our memory well we can say quite often we do unknowingly unconscious if we keep diaries then we can have a documentary evidence that what was our thoughts then and now what we are doing but we don't keep diaries then we don't have any evidence and we will say in a grown up age that well i was always like this when good thing happens when bad thing happens we don't say that i was always like this i said that i was always very good but because of this bad people i became bad that is how i will tell my story that i was always good but this and if good thing that i was always right from the childhood uh, i was always good i was always helping everybody <laughs> if i'm not then because of bad companies i became this so we always keep on changing uh, what but if i have kept diaries then the diary will speak truth <laughs> whatever was the truth of the day that is recorded there whatever was the truth of the day ajnu satya jevu pan aaje apne lagyo che athva je ritne aaje tod marod karvi hati e badi kari ne apne diary ma lakhi आज आज सांजे बेसी तेरे तोड़ मरोड़ तो कर प्रगट थे आज 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 समझ प्रमाण तोड़ मरोड़ कर एंड वी राइट बट देन आफ्टर ट्वेंटी इयर्स वेन यू कम बेक टू योर डायरी आफ्टर थर्टी इयर्स फिफ्टी इयर्स वेन यू रीड द डायरी देन मेनी टाइम वी आर शॉक्ड वी आर सरप्राइज देट वेल दिस इज वोट आई वोज थिंकिंग दिस वोज आई दिस इज दिस वेर माइ थॉट एंड आई थॉट ड्यूरिंग दोज डेज आई एम द मोस्ट मेच्यूर्ड पर्सन आई थोट देट मैंने जटली खबर है कोई खबर नहीं दरक उमर तबके आपने एम थत हो मैंने बधी खबर पड़े मैंने बधी समझ है दस का पीछे पाचा विचारों में जाए तो बता आवा अपने दिस वेर अवर थॉट्स सो देट इज बट दिस हेपन्स ओनली इफ देर इज अ रेकॉर्डेड डॉक्यूमेंट अदरवाइज वॉट विल बी डू वी विल प्ले विथ अवर मेमरी वी विल 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 सीफ्ट एंड सॉर्ट इट आउट एंड वी विल रिमूव इट देट नो आई वोज नॉट लाइक देट इट इज अ लाइ If somebody tells, I say that no, you have you have recorded the fact in a wrong manner, in your memory. It was not so. It was like this. I will counter argue with another person also when they will meet after a couple of decades to share some experience or tell something. But if it is written, recorded, photographed, videographed, put somewhere, then you can't budge now. And so uh, uh, doing this documentation is very harmful also, very dangerous also. that you will have you will not be able to deny the kind of a life that you have lived you won't be able to deny that and and we want to deny every decade we want to deny the life that we have lived in previous decade we want to be better and better and we want to we want to sort out and sift out and remove all the bad experiences and the bad things that we have done but well documenting life will not allow us to do that and so our own documents uh, uh, becomes uh, very very ghastly for us huh? they, they keep on haunting us our own so some day we become very tired and we burn our diaries we will we will uh, will uh, destroy everything on facebook on twitter on instagram divase wo jage ema gussu aayo hoy ne pachi dhada dhad badu delete karva ma lagi jaye फोटा फाड़वा मंडीए डायरी सरगा मंडीए और बदा मे लॉग ऑफ थी जाए बधु डीलीट भूसवाज मंडीए बिकॉज नाउ वी वी कांट फेस देट 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 लाइफ और देट एक्सपीरियंस ओ दोज पीपल थिंग्स हेव गॉन रॉन्ग इन सच अ वे एंड यू वॉन्ट टू इरेज ऑल दोज थिंग्स ऑल्सो बट वी केन इरेज ओनली वॉट वी हेव वी कांट इरेज वॉट अधर्स पीपल हेव बीजा वॉल पर क्या साचवी लीध स्क्रीनशॉट लई लीधा हो ज <laughs> Uh, and then now this fact comes uh, this uh, and then a uh, uh, very shocking so we emerge very very unheroic from our stories in a very unheroic way uh, almost worst we emerge uh, the 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 self that we wanted to hide 
becomes very clear uh, when we revisit those things. So that is memory, sorts and sifts according to the demands made on it by the rememberer. Uh, so so that, that, that very idea, whatever he is telling us uh, is completely unreliable. Whatever he is telling us, if we want to ascertain, we will have to go and ask Susan that really this happened. We have to ask Eric also uh, that this was what you were doing when you were in college. Uh, uh, this uh, things there. We have to ask Gordon also that he is telling that you are a very cruel person. Are you really cruel person? <laughs> are you really the abusing husband? Uh, or, or why were you abusing? And he may tell his own story. That well, I was not so. I was very good earlier. But then uh, uh, I, I came into the circumstance and these people started cheating over me. So what would I do <laughs> if I will not beat them? <laughs> If somebody yeah, stays overnight in your home and had an affair with your wife, will you be friendly with them? Will you cook pizza for them? <laughs> that you have pizza, I will cook, I will make wine glasses for you or you will box them down. <laughs> so then uh, you will say, well, Gordon, uh, the way he is being recorded in the memory of Paul, obviously it will be like this because he is the one who is damaging Gordon rather than the Gordon damaging Susan or, or, or Paul also. So we get another story eh, of, uh, of the thing if you meet those characters, otherwise this. So this is unreliable and then uh, here he said that I never kept a diary and the way he is known for uh, uh, telling lies, uh, he tells that uh, later on he says I said I never kept a diary, this isn't strictly true. <laughs> डिफरंट वे यूज टू कीप द रेकॉर्ड आई यूज टू राइट सम सेंटेन्सिज आई वील स्ट्राइक थ्रू दो सेंटेन्सिज पर स्ट्राइक थ्रू ए रीते करू के लखेलू वाँची सकते हैं You don't completely rub. I'm gooty, gooty, gooty. Now you rub, carry, na, ke, ke. No one can't even touch it. Now, after that, we say, "Carry him." Then, how should we do it? Well, we have to touch it. If the bull is touching it, then we have to touch it. If the bull is touching it, then we have to touch it. If the bull is touching it, then we have to touch it. If the bull is touching it, then we have to touch it. If the bull is touching it, then we have to touch it. If the bull is touching it, then we have to touch it. If the bull is touching it, then we have to touch it. If the bull is touching it, then we have to touch it. पेपर में गाबड़ू पाड़ी दे पी ए पी आख पेज कर पेज डीलीट कर तरह पीन पेज न पेज उड़ी जाए अले पकड़ाई तो जाए या पेरेन्ट्स के टीचर पकड़ी तो ले कि आ बुक में तब करू आखा आनी पीन हल बली गई है बाइंडिंग हो ते हचमचा नाखू आटलू तो खोटो शू कर बुक पीन हचमचा नाखी पड़ी एम अपने अपना संबंधों नहीं पीन हो हचमचा नाखी तो ये पचा के ना जो लियो कहीं खोट नहीं कर हचमची गय आखा आकोड़ा बढ़ा संबंधों मचकोड़ाई गया ते कहो छो ते कहीं करू नहीं आ भूसवा प्रयास में सो देट इज हाउ देट इज बट अनरिलायबल देट इज Uh, and that is human behavior. Eh? They want to erase their past. Eh? We want to completely, constantly in the process because we are afraid to to look back. The point is, we are afraid. Now, that is the truth. The truth is that we are afraid of the truth. It is we are afraid of the truth about our own self, which we want to tell in a different way. But those evidences or those people, if they are alive, they don't allow us to tell the new story. They they always stop us from telling a story in a similar, which is very frightening uh, thing. So reader, beware! This this one story, events and details is seen through the wrapping, colored, protective lens of memory. And so one has to be very careful when one see that whatever is told, you have to doubt. Whatever is told, you have to doubt. You have to always think that it can be in that way also, or it can be in the other way also. That is. Now, if we take this point and we try to move on and say that why this this postmodernist writer wants to have unreliable narrators? Huh? Why why you want to have uh, these people who whom you don't rely upon? Huh? Why you have to constantly doubt? Now, perhaps this tendency also grows with uh, 20th century political scene, huh? socio-cultural dynamics, and other things. And uh, during those years also, uh, whatever is told to the people. Were lies and people were believing into those lies without questioning those things. So you have to develop or build a critical mindset or a doubting mindset in such a way that whatever is told to us is not true. 
will have to doubt whoever the person tells a gammi ekli kasam khai ne ke mani kasam baap ni kasam bhagwan ni kasam gani vakat gaye bhale vijka bhari bhari nai kaav ekdam black kari rakhu hoy amne to e jem black kari hoy to bhuju unreliable hoy ke ane ketli budhi kasam khati hase ke aakhu aya nishan padi gyo na gala ma so then this all one has to be careful that you are not supposed to believe you have to doubt you have to always doubt what is told to us and that is very necessary and as we entered from 20th century into 21st century into post truth era then it becomes more important for us that we we have to develop a mindset where whatever is told to us we have to doubt we have to ascertain apre etle j kahiye ke peli khatri karvi pade darek vastu apre jate tapasvi pade and then on look we have to do lots of cross checking then only we can believe into something maybe this unreliable narrators or this storyteller is preparing us for that that don't rely on language language is used more to hide the things than reveal the things language is a curtain jem vadhu bhasha apre boliye em vadhu apre apre andar na vicharo chupavano prayas kariye chhe vyakt karva mate nahi pan chupavva mate ane etle j jare loko ne khotu bolvano hoy tyare bahu bole પકડાઈ જવાની બીક હોય ત્યારે બોલવા જ મળે ખુલાસા આપવા જ મળે પછી તમને ક્યાં કઈ પૂછ્યું છે તમે આટલા બધા ખુલાસા કેમ આપવા માંડ્યા છો એટલે કે ગરબડ તો છે મોર ધ લેંગ્વેજ દેર આર મોર થિંગ્સ ટુ હાઈડ રાધર દેન ટુ રિવીલ સો દેટ ઇઝ હાઉ ધીસ અનરિલાયબલ નેરેટર ઇઝ વેરી સિગ્નિફિકન્ટ ફોર ધ ટાઈમ ઇન વિચ વી લીવ ધ અનધર પોઈન્ટ ઓફ ધ નેરેટર ઇઝ ડ્રિફ્ટિંગ નેરેશન ફ્રોમ ફર્સ્ટ પર્સન ટુ સેકન્ડ એન્ડ દેન ધ થર્ડ પર્સન સો હાઉ this pattern or this technique we can read here so narrator drifts from first person in part 1 to second in the second and then also mixes first second third together in part 3 narration as the only story is reflection on narrator paul roberts on his story of passion and suffering this narrative pattern symbolizes his drifting away from his love susan as well as self also so when we see first person you are very near to your story your love and yourself also you are very near so you, that is first person second you are taking a step away from yourself your love and your story and the third person means you are altogether taking a long distance from your love that is susan and then from yourself also and obviously from your story also you want to now get out of that story eh, by the end of uh, the thing also so there is a very interesting ending uh, uh, there it happens in the last part that so uh, last lines uh, so i stood up and looked at susan one last time no no tear came to my eye no tear came to my eye on my way out last time susan uh, looks uh, no tear that is the distance it tries to tell on my way out i stopped at a reception and asked where the nearest petrol station might be the man was very helpful the story ends there <laughs> the man was very helpful એટલે પછી એને ચિંતા હતી કે હમણાં પેટ્રોલ ગાડીમાં ખલાસ થઈ ગયું છે તો ભરી ને ઘરે જઈએ પાસે ધક્કો ન થાય પેટ્રોલ પૂરવાનો દેટ ઇઝ હાઉ ધ સ્ટોરી એન્ડ સો ઇઝ ટેક્સ કમ્પ્લીટ ડિસ્ટન્સ ફ્રોમ સુઝેન કમ્પ્લીટલી એન્ડ દેન સી ઇઝ લાઈંગ ઇન ધ સાયલમ in a medical bed she is she is almost zombified uh, and almost uh, unconscious uh, self that she is lying and uh, he is worried about where is the petrol station so he can fill the petrol in his uh, vehicle and the life goes on for him so he takes the distance the third person narrator uh, the, the, the we tell that he is taking going away from love that is the central idea where he was nearest when he began the story then his self also which is very unreliable self from that uh, also he takes Uh, the distance and from his story also his self reliance is shattered he finds a coward within him by the end of the story by the end of the narration which is in the third person he is full of remorse and uh, guilt ridden it is a guilt not guilt guilt ridden the drift from first person to third person represents paul's dissociation not only from his only story but also from his own self uh, uh, also so that's how we can interpret uh, this uh, 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 this narrative style which julian barnes has used here in using first second and third person in the in the novel uh, authorial comments uh, the final uh, uh, part of this narrative pattern is authorial comments uh, here 
Uh, one of the best example of authorial comments comes from Thomas Hardy. Thomas Hardy was uh, one who used authorial comments very interestingly, test of D'Urbervilles, the examples that we have seen earlier. Uh, it tries to prove that how by telling a story, he also keeps on brooding upon the, the happenings uh, and he philosophizes on those things. His vision of life, Hardy's vision of life was quite pessimistic in that way. He was almost on the verge of atheism but not atheist that's why he's still questioning whether where is god or where is divinity or where is kudrat why this thing happens and he is not taking care of the poor creatures that questioning eh, would come in his philosophical thing apart from that he would question also about the movement of history also can we think of nemesis in one or the another way if as innocent pe person people like Tess has to suffer in the life then is it the happening of the history? Is it the revenge of the time that someday the, the, the forefathers of Tess uh, being a landlords might have done something wrong to the tenants? Now that is coming back on the on the Tess and Tess is paying the price or is it the return of a karma that uh, Tess is suffering? All those philosophical broodings uh, he would give and that becomes authorial comments uh, there. But then... Uh, that those narrations are third person narrations, uh, completely objective third person narration, whereas this novel is not completely third person narration, it is mixture of first, second and third. And interestingly, there are more of uh, the broodings by the self himself. It is not the third person who is commenting on the ongoing situation. But here it is the person who is our protagonist, who is our storyteller, our narrator, he himself broods upon the ongoing things. And then he, he questions uh, all those things in variety of ways. Uh, and, and this novel, like in Julian Barnes, uh, if those people who know Julian Barnes and those who read Julian Barnes, they, they tend to see that you don't read Julian Barnes for a story. You read for philosophy. Uh, story is used just to scaffold a philosophy of life. Whereas in Hardy, he is a great storyteller. There is a very interesting story in Hardy. And there is a kind of a, a pinch of salt uh, in form of philosophical comments. It's just a pinch of salt that we see in, in that. Whereas in, uh, in Julian Barnes, the story is pinch of salt. <laughs> there is a little bit of story and there are lots of brooding. Uh, lots of brooding upon uh, life, upon love as a theme, uh, uh, about, about even telling something also, about telling story also. Uh, on that also, he keeps on brooding uh, 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 of those things there. So we can say that these are not mere authorial comments that we see in other narrative, but this is more of a philosophical broodings where there is more philosophy, less story. Or story or characters or incidents are just used uh, uh, so that he can philosophize on something. And so that is more heavily found in Julian Barnes. Uh, uh, so these are those quotes that we have seen earlier. Uh, we have read this part, so we are not reading it again. These are examples that how he broods upon uh, those uh, uh, things that he, he looks at that in the initial part before he begins the story there is already a lots of brooding eh, before even the story begins uh, there uh, this again later on eh, later on also uh, this comes that here was an entry he is looking at diary eh? he told that well I was never keeping a diary and then he said that, well, but I used to keep a diary. And then he says, here is one entry in the diary. So he is now again not telling us a story, but brooding upon what he has written in diary. So instead of telling us a story, uh, he will brood upon what once upon a time he wrote uh, uh, in, in a diary. Uh, uh, here was an entry, a serious one, not a kind of a comical one which he might have made earlier. Uh, there, which he hadn't crossed out uh, in years. So as we have seen that he had a habit of crossing out entries in diary. He would write, he will cross out and again he would write something, he will correct uh, something and then he will do uh, that. But if this was an entry which was not crossed out. So whenever you went back to your diary, you, you stood with that. Well, this is still true. This is still true. So I am not crossing it out. If I found it wrong, then I will cross it out and then I will rewrite that now what do I believe uh, in, in that aspect? Uh, he couldn't remember where it came from. He never recorded the writer or the source. 
this is the problem that we have to tell that always record the source so that later on somebody is asking you can tell that this came from here otherwise you have to be honest in telling that well i don't remember from where it came so was this thought by somebody or was it my thought you have to tell i don't know but to tell i don't know is very tough koi pan vyakti ne em kehu ke mane avartu nahi ये बहुत अघरी वस्तु कोई कही ना सके मैं आवड़े ये तो भूलाई गय आई फॉर गोट इट सो सो विल ऑलवेज से सो इफ यू डोंट रिमेम्बर द सोर्स देन यू हैव टू एक्सेप्ट दैट वेल यू डोंट नो देन यू कैन टेक इट एज योर ओन सोर्स सो दैट इज वॉट हिज टेलिंग ही नेवर रेकॉर्डेड द राइटर और द सोर्स ही डिडेंट वॉन्ट टू बी बुलीड बाय रेप्यूटेशन थ्रूथ शुड स्टैंड बाय इट सेल्फ क्लियर एंड अनसपोर्टेड दिस वन वेंट से इन माई ओपिनियन every love happy or unhappy is a real disaster once you give yourself over to it entirely au ke diary ma lakhelo hot kone kya thi lekhyu yaad nahi mara jeevan ma thi aavi hot ne main lekhyu to ki kya thi vaanchi hot i don't know but whatever it is this is there in my opinion every love happy or unhappy is a real disaster once you give yourself over to it entirely yes that deserved to stay moti umar e lage ke na barabar ch a haqeeqat sachi aaj hi revu joye ke he liked the proper inclusivity of happy or unhappy but the key was but the key was not happy or unhappy the key was once you give yourself over to it entirely once you give entirely to it then despite appearances this wasn't pessimistic nor was it bitter sweet this was a truth about love spoken by someone in the full vortex of it and which seemed to uh, enclose all of life's sadness also so uh, in a way pessimistic or not but it seems to be pessimistic because it is talking about disaster and even if it is happy still it is a disaster unhappy and disaster is fine but then uh, 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 this also so every love is a disaster that is what he would conclude uh, even if it is a happy then also provided provided you have given yourself entirely to that love then that is what uh, uh, happens uh, there and then also the sadness of life uh, it keeps on uh, paragraph after paragraph in last part there are more of broodings uh, more of the brooding keep on coming so you would begin a paragraph and then we'll keep on thinking uh, about those thing the sadness of life so as if we are reading a kind of a non fictional philosophical book huh? it seems like that rather than we are reading a novel which tends to tell a story that is how philosophical brooding is spread across huh? this that was another conundrum he would occasionally ponder which was the correct or the more correct formulation and then he would work on that eh? when you write something rework life is beautiful but sad or life is sad but beautiful <laughs> how will you think of this <laughs> but well life is sad <laughs> even if it is beautiful that is how it remains eh? uh, there one of the other was obviously true but he could never decide which he could never decide with now he could means third person narration eh? we are seeing here yes love had been a complete disaster for him and for susan also and for john also and back before his time it might well have been so for macleod as well there is gordon macleod he skimmed through a few crossed out entries the lines which were checked out then slid the notebook back in the drawer perhaps he had always been wasting his time perhaps love could never be captured in a definition which he was constantly trying to write what is love and when we'll see the theme of love we will see how he tries to define love huh, in various ways so he perhaps thought that the way entire life i was just trying to capture what is love in definition but maybe you can never capture uh, 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 love in definition it could only ever be captured in a story you know, a rather long story you have to tell to try to capture uh, the love uh, uh, there so that is what uh, he, he tells uh, and and uh, does the things there uh, well nowadays also people have uh, this habit which uh, which uh, uh, paul used to have about writing this quotes 
borrowed or self written in the diary visiting checking and doing the things and then comes down to this conclusion is something that also people do nowadays we have apps also nowadays as it is all about digital so there are apps which says your quote and people love to go to see that well this is my quote and then people will not make it viral they say themselves will make it viral <laughs> my quote and then they will try to do well that is the same sentiment which paul also is involved as if we want to define life we want to say that well i have understood life in this way and so we keep on writing small quotes about life as if we have learned huh, those things or not that maybe like paul we also undergo the same process of revisiting and crossing out and rechecking it again and again and then maybe again we may say that well well those days if you are thinking in this way this was not fair it was it was quite troublesome to think of life in this way also life has unfolded in a different way uh, altogether so whatever we have done and then uh, as paul says that you can't you can't capture life or love uh, in definition uh, you have to tell a story about uh, uh, that but that story itself is something which is so unreliable that we never know whether that this story will capture uh, his love or or not so this is uh, how uh, we see uh, uh, this uh, uh, things here about uh, narrative uh, uh, technique how this i think might be not okay okay fine so this we we end here uh, this, this discussion about narrative uh, uh, pattern uh, uh,